Oh, hi, guys and girls. Back again. Let's see, been two weeks, I think. Give or take a little. And I just get on the radio back here. Let's see, you got that all lit up. Yeah, it's on the radio having a political uh, dissertation with a, a friend of mine. We have, we have handles. Uh, guy's name is Fred, but uh, we uh, we go by handles. I'm uh, I am BS3 on the radio for those of you that don't know it. And uh, actually, that means bullshit three. And uh, because that's what we do. As we get on there and we BS, of course, he, he's called Goose Rider. I don't, I don't, I don't know where in the blazes he got that handle. But anyway, uh, weather. Weather has uh, gotten decent. It's awfully dry. For all you boys and girls out there that watch my stuff here at the Big Star at Seagull South, it is dry. Uh, it's spring for us. Or our spring starts usually mid to late February. And here we are in mid March. And usually by this time the grass is up in the green. Of course, it, it fries off during the summer because it gets so hot. But this time of year, usually the temperatures are fairly uh, temperate and uh, the grass comes up and it's green. And all we've got is weeds. i got a nice stand of weeds out here in the yard. I need to mow this weekend. But uh, out in the fields in the prairie, it's just brown. Lord help us if anybody lights a match because it's going to burn. Uh, my understanding is that uh, they... Uh, They've got some pretty sizable grass fires up at right prairie fires, grass fires up in uh, Oklahoma at the moment. And someplace out west of here, I forget the name, uh, they had a pretty good one, several hundred acres. Uh, they got it out. Uh, watched, I was going to dialysis today and uh, turned the radio on. And I thought, aha, it's those radical Islams again because a building in New York exploded and uh, collapsed. Two buildings I think. Well it wasn't. It turned out that it was a gas leak and uh, some uh, oh, uh, slumlord uh, had uh, neglected to uh, do anything about it. He had had uh, evidently the uh, building had a one of the buildings had a church in it. There was a uh, I want to say a flower shop. I don't know. But anyway, there was also an apartment complex and the thing. And the people in the apartment complex complained and complained of the slumlord smelling gas, smelling gas. Well, the place blew up today. Took down the better part of a city block, scattered bricks and glass and stuff. For, killed two that I know of. And I think they've got 12 missing, so we're assuming that they're buried in the rubble. Anywho, it, it wasn't I, it wasn't who I thought it was. I, I remember uh, I, w I was on the way to uh, dialysis and I heard it on the radio. I called the wife, told her better turn on the uh, uh, turn on TV. Arab's been at it again. I was wrong, so I have I am corrected. Uh, what uh, has brought me on this evening, really? stimulated me to get on. And you probably notice I'm having bigger gaps in my uh, dissertations. But uh, the thing that uh, really uh, spurred me to get on here tonight was that I heard today that uh, my President Obama, which, uh, as you know, I, uh, as time has gone along, I'm not, I'm not as thrilled with him as I once was. It's been quite a, t it's been quite a while since I've been thrilled with him. I'll restate, I am a New Deal Democrat. I believe in the labor movement. I think the Republicans are all a bunch of greedy so-and-sos. But this does not automatically give me a uh, blank check to like everything that Obama does. And let's face it, there's been things that he's done that uh, I haven't liked or haven't been properly handled, the uh, health care thing. Uh, now maybe 
I, 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 other than the right wing radio talkies, I don't hear much about it anymore. Uh, it, evidently, it's uh, it's starting to kind of smooth out. Uh, I saw where he went on uh, online, on here, to try to uh, inspire some of the uh, younger generation to go ahead and uh, sign up for Obamacare. And that's that's the only thing that's going to make it go. You got to have people sign up and uh, pay their little bit so that uh, everybody gets their little bit. But anyway, uh, he's I don't know. I'm not, I don't know that I'm smart enough to really make a judgment as to because the guy is being hammered on night and day. I mean, 24/7. There's somebody on that. I've got a portable radio here. It's nice radio. I turn it on, and there's somebody on there hammering on Obama. They don't even they don't even have commercials. <laughs> That's one thing I've noticed about the uh, right wing talkie radio things. They do have commercials, but they don't have near as many. They obviously don't need the money. <laughs> I mean, they they uh, they are a paid political announcement. I mean, the uh, Koch brothers and uh, whoever they're the ones that come to mind. But to whoever the other uh, you know neocons are that are out there that are uh, pushing this thing, I mean, they must just pour the money on because uh, uh, most of your uh, radio, AM radio in the United States is controlled by the right wing, and uh, the, they spent 24-7 going after the Democrats, and particularly Obama. I mean, he has been, you know, he has been fair game from day one. Well, of course, one of the things is because he's black. It's, uh, they, they hate him because of that. That, uh, that cuts no ice with me. He could be sky blue pink. I just, uh, I want his policies to uh, correspond to what I think they ought to be. Listen to me. Anyway, he came out today, yesterday, and he said he was going to make a presidential, is the word decree? I hate the word decree. It sounds so overbearing. But I'll use that. I don't think that's it. I don't think that's the proper word. But anyway, he's gonna he's gonna sit down and write a, a uh, order, and this order is gonna state that employers that uh, have over the years uh, changed the titles on employees, so to kind of put them in the vaporous uh, pseudo management type of thing, then I pay them overtime. Uh, He's going to mandate that if you work a guy over 40 hours, I don't know all the circumstances. There are there are circumstances involved here. But for the last 20, 25, 30 years, since, particularly since Ronnie Reagan was in, it has become habit for employers to uh, first uh, divest themselves, of, they divest themselves of all their uh, benefits. They usually, if, if they've got health insurance, it didn't worth a damn. If they've got a retirement program, which hardly any of them do anymore, they've divested themselves of all their retirement programs. Uh, and one of the things they've done in this divesting of responsibilities is they've stopped paying overtime. Uh, you got these right to work states and whatnot. I have to assume that in the right to work states, they legislated that uh, you know if you worked over forty hours, tough stuff. You know, hey, you make seven bucks an hour for for the first eight, you make uh, seven bucks an hour for the next four, and uh, that's not right. Uh, I can remember. Uh, I, of course, I worked for the post office, and I was in the labor movement. And uh, for many years back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, the post office used to work us about 24-7. They'd work us 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, now we did get time and a half for over the eight hours. But of course, when you work 12 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, at some point you want to go home. I mean, you, you just want to go rest. And... Uh, the post office was saving money. They didn't have to hire any new people. They just worked what they had longer hours. So we uh, got a contract one time. And if they worked you over... Boy, I'm getting old. 
I have these gaps. I get into these uh, trains of thought. There was a period of time if you worked if you worked forty hours, you'd work time and a half. But if you worked, I want to say if you worked over ten hours, it went to no. If you, if you worked over five days and you worked 12 hours those five days, when you went into the sixth day and you went over eight hours, they had to pay you double time and a half. Boy, you talk about making money. We had a guy, Clifton Jones, <laughs> he just ate that up. He never went home. Now, me, I wanted to go home. And the reason that we negotiated the double time and a half was not for the money. It was not for the money. It was to force them to go out and hire more employees so that we didn't have to work 12 hours a day, 7 days a week. I mean, when when they got to pay in that double time and a half, because, they, of course, initially after we signed the contract and for a period of time, they kept on going 12 hours a day, 7 days a week. But it didn't take very long for them to dawn, dawn on them that that double time and a half was eating their lunch. So then they started hiring people, and that was what we wanted them to do. And this this relieved the load on the people that uh, that were working those hours, and that was the reason why. But ever since they busted the unions, ever since uh, Reagan fired Patco, you people remember Patco? That was the uh, air traffic controllers back in the early '80s. They they went out on strike, and uh, he fired a whole lot of them. Brought in the military. It was the biggest debacle ever was. But anyway. Ever since he did that, then it has become pretty well commonplace uh, for your private industry to bust all unions. And when they bust all the unions, they've driven the wages down. They've done away with overtime pay. It was one of the things that divested themselves of all their uh, uh, benefits, benefit programs, in overtime pay. And, uh, and re through regressive policies, they've driven pay down. Well, this guy today... And I'm proud of him. Uh, he's done a lot of things I don't like. Uh, he, uh, his, uh, he, he has not done some of the things that I expected. But today, he looked these people in the eye and he said, "If you work a man over eight hours, then you owe him for his extra time." And I say, "Hooray for Obama!" It's a about time we reversed some of this uh, uh, regressive management uh, policies that have been going on. I mean, back in the 1870s, 1880s, the day of sweatshops, <laughs> you know, they didn't like the way you looked at them. Hey, you're out the door. Uh, the unions came along in the early part of late part of the 1800s and uh, in the early early to mid 1950s uh, 1900s 1950 1960 and they changed this you could you couldn't fire a guy just because he was his religion didn't match yours you know if he was uh, if he was doing his job you couldn't just arbitrarily go up and fire him because you didn't like him anyway uh, once they managed to bust the unions then, uh, yeah, all that stuff has come back into play. I mean, they've driven wages down. The, I'm telling you, the average wage now, I somebody correct me on this. I think the average wage is about 10 bucks an hour. And in order to uh, make a living wage, uh, what it would have been, say, uh, back in the uh, late 50s, early 60s, you'd be making 20, 30 bucks an hour because inflation over the years has gone along. They've driven that down. I mean, there's so many people living in poverty, working two or three jobs, and it's not because they like it, and it's not because they're stupid. Uh, now, maybe they're not as educated as some people would like so that they can uh, go in and, uh, you know, do spreadsheets and uh, run, uh, you know, uh, robotic uh, machinery and stuff like that. They just need a job. They need a job making widgets. And... Uh, those jobs have gone away. 
But for those people out there that are in the, and most of these folks are going to be in the lower end of the work scale, uh, Obama, you did good. As far as I'm concerned, uh, this, well, this is one of the best days you've had. You've been in now six, six plus years. And I think today you finally showed your, your colors. Isn't that pathetic? You, you know what I mean. Uh, you finally uh, said, hey, this is not right. We have screwed the working man long enough. If the guy's working for you and he works over eight hours. Now, I'm not sure this applies to everybody. There are co cognizance in there that uh, there, there are people that won't fall under this. But... Uh, but the idea is that he is uh, he is forcing. <laughs> Boy, the righties won't like that. You shouldn't be able to force an employer to do anything out of you. Able to do it, damn well, please. Just, well, in some instances, there's going to be if this thing goes as through as it should, they will be forced to have to do one or two things. And of course, probably a lot of them will uh, fire. You know, they'll either pay the person the overtime or they will fire them. And I hate to say it, but a lot of them will fire the people before they pay the overtime. They'll be so damn hard shelled that they'll, you know, they'll fire them. And say, hell no, I ain't gonna do that. That takes into my bottom line. I won't be able to buy another yacht next year. Uh, my Cadillac, uh, Cadillac SST, you know, is uh, it needs a, you know, I need a wife. Me needs one. That I can't do that if I gotta pay this bloke over here overtime. So yeah, they'll probably fire a lot of people, but I still think it's a good idea. So way to go, Barack. You finally uh, living up to your bill in there. And uh, Fred, if you watch this, <laughs> we agree on a lot more things. Than, of course, you and I both know we agree on a lot more things than uh, you know, than uh, you know we we put on. But uh, that's what brought me on here. I I think that uh, he is dead on. I think that uh, the American industrial base has uh, been uh, screwing its employees for about the last... Reaganomics. Screw you, I got mine. That's been the name of the game. And today, by God, somebody stood up and said, Nah, we're not going to do that. So, way to go, Barack. That's about it. I've done everything I was going to do. I heard I talked to you, uh, Cooter. Talk to you on the radio there. I guess you're probably home by now. I uh, got a mow Saturday. My buddy David Berg up in New York, for those of you at Siegel North that watch my stuff, uh, you need to keep tabs on Dave. I, uh, I'm not a doctor. And I, uh, every time I try to diagnose somebody, I'm dead wrong. But I talked to Debbie yesterday day before yes day before yesterday and uh ah uh, doesn't sound good to me you know so you prayers out there pray for him he needs it some Barty good to hear you said by the pool I talked to John today Folks up Seagull North I talked to, uh, somebody down there in Florida, sitting by the pool having a cool one. <laughs> I'll get him. I'll get him this summer. Crystal, you have a fine one. My son's Kyle and Carl. Kyle, I understand you're coming to see me, not this weekend, but next weekend. Good. Good. I can hardly wait. Tracy, top of the day to you. Heights and Raider. Evidently, I talked your buddy into the ground. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't. I don't know what the situation was, but he suggested that, <laughs> in a genteel sort of way, that I go elsewhere. So I did. I go elsewhere. Anyway, hope you hope hope all your snow's gone. I'm sure it is. I bet you that uh, you're gonna have more skiers this year. Skiers thrive on melted snow. Ike, top of the day to you. I saw one of your. Uh, one of your things. Our sucker hadn't been on there any time at 900 hits. You poplar fella. 
Hmm, Daryl Mackey. If you haven't called David, better try. I don't know if you can get him. Yeah, I think David sleeps most of the time now, which that bothers me. He, not, not that I can't talk to him, it's just that he's down as much as he apparently is. Tyler? Hope, you, hope you're in there, guy. Carl in Bradford? I'm going to tell you, Carl, uh, I'm trying to go back to Dunkirk, to Brooks Hospital. Them old boys there in Bradford, uh, they've got a, a routine that uh, I don't know how your dad is uh, experiencing it, but, but uh, what they do as far as uh, the way they pull you down, uh, I had to say bothers me. Uh, well, there were two sessions last summer. One was on a Friday and one was on a Monday. And my dry weight was good. And boy, they sucked me down to the point where uh, my heart was skipping a beat. I mean, they had me so sick. And uh, I spoke to them about it. And it didn't matter. They said, well, that's, that's, that's the way our doctors tell us to do it. Well, now I still might end up there because, of course, I got no guarantee that uh, Brooks over in uh, Dunkirk is going to take me. But I'm going to see if I can get in there. If not, well, yeah, okay, I'll probably be back in Bradford. Uh, Jim Kersey, uh, haven't seen you. Yeah, I have. But uh, looking forward to getting up this summer. And uh, can't think of anybody else or anything else. Let's hear it for Obama. <laughs> All you left-wing pinkos, socialistic, uh, they call me a commie. I'm just a New Deal Democrat, and as far as I'm concerned... Obama showed his New Deal Democrat credentials today, and I'm glad. He uh, he needs to do more of it. He needs to get in there and help the poor working stiff. He needs to tariff. Now here's something for you that'll uh, get the righties going. We need to have a uh, economic war with the Chinese. We need to tariff their materials to the point where they can be made in the United States for the same and sold here and people can be employed here now of course the cost of a lot of things to go up like I bought a can opener nice one what the flip was the name of that thing made in China I think I paid a dollar sixty for it well it's a hand can opener you got, got the handles like a set of pliers you know put it under now if uh, that was made in the United States Instead of being a buck sixty, it'd probably be uh, nine dollars and eighty cents, ten dollars. For me, so that some poor bloke can have a job at a living wage. Yeah, I'd pay the ten bucks. I would. Of course, we'd probably be in a war with China because, of course, their economy going to tank. We are the biggest economy in the world, and I know they sell stuff to India and the European Union and all that, but when push comes to shove, they sell their stuff in the United States, and if uh, we uh, we cut the legs out from underneath their uh, production base, then they'd be upset. So, But I'd do it. If I was Obama, yeah, I would slowly tires, flatware, I'd tire, I'd... Uh, uh, tariff all that stuff and I would also like to tell you these Toyota trucks that are building down in uh, San Antonio I put a surcharge in them sucker store you couldn't buy them <laughs> Chevy Ford and Dodge or or Ram as they say now yeah it, uh, I'd, uh, I'd uh, put them smack out of business and I'm driving a Kia boy listen to me you talk about somebody that uh, turncoat but of course if I couldn't buy the key, I'd have to buy an American car. Anyway, I've run on long enough. You guys have a fine one. It's, uh, so, well, wait, this is March, April, May. April, May, June, 60. I got about 85 days. And I'll be up there at Seagull North, so you folks save me a place to table. Y'all be good now, huh? Yeah?